So welcome to our orientation. My name is David Fruman. I am a professor in molecular biology and biochemistry, and I was the director of GPS Biomed, I'm, and uh, am now serving as academic director of GPS STEM. It's great to see you all here. Uh, before I, I talk a little bit, I'd like to ask you to raise your hand if you are a member of the four schools. So first, biological sciences. Uh, OK, school of medicine, uh, physical sciences, and engineering. That's great. Any, any programs I didn't mention? Yeah? Farm Sci. Farm Sci. OK, good. Well, that really is gratifying because the big goal of GPS STEM is to take what has worked with the biomedical community and expand it to other disciplines. Uh, whether they're in biosci like ecology and evolution or disciplines in physical sciences and engineering that aren't traditionally supported by NIH mechanisms. So five years ago, we started this with a, a grant from NIH, and it was uh, one of 17 experiments around the country to try to identify best practices in, in professional development to prepare trainees at the graduate and postdoc levels for diverse careers, um, not just outside academia, but within academia, but uh, at the realization that you are all qualified with your PhDs to do a lot of fulfilling careers in life. And it's been, it's been a success around the country in these 17 award sites, and it's been a tremendous success here at UCI. Every year we've seen increased enrollment. I think word of mouth has, has convinced people it's good to, to join this program and to, to uh, you know, take advantage of the opportunities. And the faculty have, have been supportive. The administration has been very supportive. And in the end, we were able to obtain continued funding for another five years through contributions from those four schools that I mentioned, as well as the provost's office. Uh, and for the last year, the, the, the uh, program has been led on a day-to-day -day, day -day manner by Dr. Harinder Singh, who was the associate, or the associate director of GPS Biomed. And he's now, yeah, he, he cast me aside now. Um, I, recognizing his, his competence and independence and ability to, to lead the ship and captain the ship, uh, he is now the director of GPS STEM. So that's really all I wanted to say. I'm, I'm pleased to see you here joining the program, uh, and I will hand it over to, to Harinder. So leadership, as David mentioned, this is how we've been, and uh, now roles have changed a little bit. We have two of our um, uh, interns who are with us, and I'll introduce you, uh, them to you very soon. They do a lot of stuff related to re video recording and newsletter stuff. So this is the GPS Biomed program, which David mentioned that this was funded by NIH, uh, and there were 17 different sites. UCI was one of them. So you guys are very lucky to be here to be part of this program, which has been running very successfully for past five years. And we've really been able to take our students and postdocs to the next level where be competent for any kind of um, career. The traditional model in biomedical sciences. I'm going to talk about biomedical sciences just briefly, a couple of slides, because this original uh, uh, program was related to biomedical sciences, but all the programming elements could easily be applied to any career. So uh, the traditional model, which you will get to hear a lot from your faculties also, it's about do your PhD, get a postdoc position, become a faculty, you know, become a teacher, uh, but there's tons of other things also you can do. And NIH actually realized that five, six years ago um, that, you know, there are tons of other things you can do during this PhD training, and we do train you for all those things. So this is a best broadening experiences in scientific training model, which has, um, says that you need to have actually, you can be trained for all these different careers during your PhD. And right after PhD, finishing a PhD, you can get into multiple different careers which come out of it. You don't have to necessarily do a postdoc or you can do a short postdoc, but that's not what your um, goal is. Um, our mission of the program, which is still going to stay the same, but we're going to change from biomedical sciences to other STEM disciplines, is we want to expose you to uh, make you aware about variety of different careers which come out of PhD and postdoctoral training. Not only will make you um, experience um, great scientists, but it will also make you like a you know, great professional so that, so that you can get into any field after that. So there are four elements of the program based on the, the previous um, platforms, career development platforms which people have developed. Uh, that's called My IDP, My Individual Development Plan. How many of you are aware about My IDP? Great. Oh, wow. So this is going to be your basis for like, you know, graduate education. A lot of grants you're going to write, they're going to ask you for my IDP, you know, and, and even during your career, uh, PhD thesis, you know, 
committees, you know, they will be asking, some of the department schools will be asking for MIDP. So um, get used to that. We have a workshop coming up um, in, in a couple of days, you know, please attend that workshop. Um, four components to this training, there is career exploration, where you will learn about many different careers which exist uh, coming out of PhD. We give you training for that, uh, those specific careers, whatever you end up deciding that you would like to get into. Um, you will gain some hands of uh, experience by whether it's teaching or industry uh, site visit stuff. I'll get into that, uh, those details briefly. And the transition part where it will actually help you to transition to that next level by connecting with alumni, online networking, and going to networking events. So this is a couple of examples of a couple of events which we have been organizing in the past. A lot of it, um, the stuff is pretty much going to stay the same, but we will expand it to other STEM disciplines. We do career, and, um, career night and networking mixers where we've organized events related to teaching, you know, teaching careers, regulatory affairs, um, careers in medical affairs, medical devices, medical science liaison, medical writing. Data science is something which we plan to do and we've been collaborating with uh, School of Engineering to come up with new ideas and innovative approaches, uh, programs which can be applied to any discipline. We have another uh, career exploration event which we call it Life Beyond the PhD. This is an event where we bring our alumni who come and talk to you about like what steps they had to take to get into where they are, whether it's academic research, teaching, or industry profession. So they'll really, it's a very casual question answer uh, session where you ask questions, they'll tell you, they'll just briefly take you through, you know, their career journey. And we use whiteboard, like and they'll write things. And you know, it's really like, you know, fun um, event. Uh, we've actually organized a couple of events with the uh, people from local companies uh, where they teach you industry insider, like give you the basics of the, uh, the whole uh, field. We've done really interesting events also. A lot of people have actually, after PhD postdoc, they've gone into like, you know, beer making and wine making. So we had uh, speakers come and talk about their career journey, how they got into that. Got into really super details, but then, you know, it was a great uh, informational session for people. Business concepts, it's very important. It can be applied to any STEM disciplines. Biomedical scientists um, slowly have been realizing the business concepts, how important they are, but other STEM people are really into it. So I think it will help you to polish those skills that are, you know, if you're thinking about you know, coming up with their own startup or something, will provide those avenues. There are, now when you think about career and professional development, academia gives you all these trainings, but then you have to really uh, realize that all these trainings which you do uh, during academic uh, PhD postdoc can easily be applied to any industry setting. There are many different um, skill sets which are in high demand and to get into industry or in academia. So these are the things which you will learn during your graduate training and postdoctoral training and we will actually build on top of it so that actually you are, you know the language, you know you're able to write those keywords in your resume and during interviews you can talk about it. One of the big one is science communication and public speaking. I mean, I wish we had enough, I had enough during my graduate school and postdoctoral training. I'm here, I'm talking, you know, my heart is going like, you know, really fast, but I'm struggling. But, but I think, you know, if you, I wish I had some sort of training where somebody was teaching me how to calm your nerves, how to go up there and give a scientific conference at international big conferences. So stuff like that, even will give you like um, training on how to actually really distill down your research. That's the main uh, big component of our program. Teamwork, you always work in the lab, in teams, there are conflicts. You need to learn how to resolve those conflicts. This is an important part of getting into any, any career that you need to learn how to work in teams. Project management, business concepts, you need to multitask. You have multiple projects going on. You'll have just one project you'll have to manage. You have to have really good skills, you know, how to do that. Uh, networking and community building. It's not only in industry, industry careers, but even in academia, when you go to conferences, when you finish your PhD, you're getting close to finishing PhD, you need to line up a postdoc position. You have to talk to people, go up there. You cannot be just nerdy and saying like, well, I have a great CV with like tons of publications. I will get a postdoc position. That's, those things are gone. Like you really have to be proactive for your career. Understanding the knowledge of science and policy. I'll get into that. We do a lot of stuff related to science policy also. So these are like different uh, programs which we sort of like made this diagram for you to understand that we really prepare you for all these different skills. 
Um, important, very important part of our program, as I said, science communication. Bree McWhorter from Activate to Captivate, Captivate, she's Masters in Fine Arts. She will help you to calm your nerves down. <laughs> She'll give you like these, um, basically like she uses her acting skills to help you to uh, teach scientists how to do effective communication. There's a certificate program we run and you have to be members to be able to participate in that course. Uh, she also runs elevator pitch workshops where you will actually really distill down and, you know, bring your research. For th I mean, if I were to ask you, if you were to ask me about my research like, you know, um, a year ago, I would take 30 minutes to talk to about my research. But you need to really bring it down to two minutes depending on what situation you are in, which circumstances you are in. So that's the training you'll get during these workshops. This is Bree running her workshops. She's amazing. And she also runs interview skills workshop, you know, for those people this is a training component and this is a transition component. All those people who are actually getting into take, uh, going through interviews, she'll help you what sort of questions get asked. So it's a great program. I'll highly recommend, but again, you have to go through some of the programming to accrue some credits. Sandra Singh Lo, she runs a podcast on NPR called Lowdown on Science, and Sandra takes a little bit more uh, deep approach, deeper approach into science communication, where she teaches you, uh, it's a 10 week long course where you will bring in your research, what you work on, and you'll really break it down and still keep the key content, technical contents in it. And this communication skills course have helped people give like great talks at conferences, even grad uh, research days here, people do amazing. And you can see that these people have taken her course. Even I think you know, a lot of faculties actually benefit from you know, how been, she's been conducting classes. Um, after, so we have a YouTube channel, which is GPS Time UC Irvine. You guys should all go and look at all the videos, which at the end of the class, she makes people uh, record five minute TED style talks. And you can uh, watch all these videos and see how uh, learn about their research. Um, you can see all the videos here. We will be recording tons of events also, whatever you're going through, and that will be posted there so that, you know, sometimes you're busy in lab, you don't have time to come for these events, and but you really wanted to. So we'll try to use YouTube channel more effectively to spread the information. The other part we are doing is we are partnering with Applied Innovation to give these uh, business concepts for STEM sciences course. It just started a couple of weeks ago. And that's our way to bridge the gap between applied innovation. You know, they're like super advanced people, talk about business all the time. You go through these networking events and they're talking about business model canvas. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? How can I get that information? So we're trying to bridge that gap and you can actually talk about your research, put it on business model canvas. And if you're interested in you know, starting your own business, you can do that. If not, at least good to know that business jargon to move into any career. UCI extension courses, we partner with Division of Continuing Education to offer you many different courses which you can take. Um, in order to take these courses, you have to be an official member. What you're doing here right now, sitting here, you are partially becoming a partial member. And I'll talk about other requirements. As you attend events, we give you these credits, professional development credits, I'll talk about it in a bit. Once you accrue more than five credits, you're eligible to take these courses, which are more than $700 worth courses. I mean, I would highly recommend to participate actively and go through this process and learn these things before you get out. Experience part is where we take you out into the battlefield, sometimes I call it, you know, we'll take you to the industry site visits, you see how the product pipeline works, how different pharmaceutical companies work, what's a different, um, aspects of it, what different roles can you, can you get involved in. So we, in the past, we've actually gone to uh, Vortex Learning Labs in San Diego, BioRad, Pfizer, Allergan. They are all local here, very close. You can just drive over there. And you learn tons of stuff from them, you know, how those industries function. At the end of it, they do networking events with their professionals. You get to learn how they can get into what they are doing right now. And most of them are PhD postdoc background. So it's great to actually learn from um, these people firsthand and gain some experience. Internships is something we've been trying to build, but then there's a little bit of, you know, it takes a lot of time from our programming. So we, what we do is we just connect you to those sources where they're looking for internships. We'll put in a reference good word for you if we know them and if we know that you participated in our program and you've attended like, you know, a couple of programs, so you have these many number of credits. We share that information with them and then that increases your chances of building your own internships. We don't really do internships, but we're thinking of more like shadowing programs 
where you do soft internships, you can work with them without actually spending a couple of months there. You can just go there once a week and you know watch them what they do, talk to people in that um, in that company, and learn from them. Uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, on-campus internships also, applied innovation and office of research, you can do some internships. The transition, the last part, this is like after you've gone through all this process, the last part, now you're ready to actually get into any career. You know what you want, you, you, you want to go there, but then you cannot do that unless you do the online networking using LinkedIn. You cannot do that unless you have training in how to network. Some of us are very like, you know, we have inborn skills like we know how to network you know you're like hustlers we can go and you know run in the room and you know talk to everyone we have business cards from everyone but a lot of us need that training and i think we will give you that safe space to actually build those networking skills um, we run this program called mentoring program uh, just to tell you about the mentoring or uh, the networking so we are connected to a lot of different industries in southern california a lot of our alumni actually work in those companies, so they're always ready to help and come back and bring us, um, invite us to their uh, industry site visits and networking events. We've been trying to build tons of networking events in partnership with other local companies. You'll get to hear more about that. A great part of our program is mentoring program. Leo, um, I don't know if you're gonna talk about it. He's our current uh, member. Mentoring program is where we connect you to alumni. And this year we actually, because of our context, which we have built over the period of five years, we got um, mentors, um, professionals who served as mentors to um, mentors to mentor mentees, you know, PhDs and postdocs. You have to do certain number of requirements. You have to have PD credits to be enrolled into that program. This year we had 40, around 40 mentors from multi, many different professions, including uh, academic research, including people who are uh, postdocs in industry. So if you're thinking of industry route, like, you know, maybe it's a great thing to sometimes do postdoc. And from there, to learn about the industry, get into different careers. Um, and, and that program runs for around like three months. This time we took a slightly different approach because our alumni is spread all over the country. In the past it was only local, only people who are around here, they could come and attend, but now they are spread all over the country. We connect them through online Zoom platform so you can have like, we do the first meetings and then you can you know, build that connection or that relationship with them over the period of time. This is our, you know, one of the most um, popular program and most effective program. Uh, industry mixers where we bring people and you know we network with them as I mentioned before. Uh, another important part of transition as I said online networking. We prepare you for um, how to network online, how to use your social media channels effectively. Uh, with Lauren uh, from Division Career Pathways, she's going to talk about um, how we've done certain things and some of the new initiatives they do. They are our collaborators in this training, especially the transition part. We do uh, the basics, intermediate, and advanced level workshops, which really gives you the length and breadth of the whole LinkedIn um, platform, how to use it effectively. You, can, you should start building it right now because a lot of us, you know, start to do it only when you're getting to the last, like, you know, I'm finishing PhD in a few months. I need to learn about this. Then you get too active and there is a recruiters come and look at your activity. If you've been active on LinkedIn for like certain number of years or like at least a year, then only you will get noticed by recruiters. If you've been just like putting all your effort just in two months, they know what PhDs do. They know that you are not prepared. So I would say just use this platform effectively from now on. There's a lot of like news feed you'll see. How many of you have LinkedIn? Wow, why am I even talking, right? Um, but um, so LinkedIn is an online networking platform. You guys know it, but then you'll learn more about it, how to connect with um, recruiters. MedTech Mega Mixer is something we do. We've been trying to, we've tried to start collaborating with Orange County Biomedical Net Network, OC Regulatory Affairs, MedTech Innovation Exchange, Change Device Alliance, which is all medical device companies around here, and GPS Biomed uh, in the past. We ran, we did to these two um, big MedTech Mega Mixers, which were great. And we had like a lot of our trainees participate in that. And we did give them a little bit of training before they went over there and then part, uh, network with the professionals. So we take care of you before you actually go out there. Let's see, this is the most important part. I know you've been like, okay, this is a great program. How do I get involved? The, this is a professional development credits part. You know, every event you attend, we give you a professional development credit. 
My IDP and LinkedIn, we actually give two PD credits because this is a little bit more involved. Um, if you attend this live beyond the PhD series, you get one credit for, ad, for that. Career panel events, if there is networking with that, then we give you two credits for that. Um, if you go for alumni career panels, there also if there's networking, we give you two credits. So pretty much like if you look at it, you are sitting here, you got one credit. You filled up the form, a lot of you have LinkedIn profiles, you gave me a LinkedIn profile URL, you got one more credit. You're gonna now do my EDP and fill it up and then share it with me. If you're not, if you don't know how to do it and you've done it, but just somebody asked you to do it, you would like to learn more. October 16, we have an event like on Wednesday, you should come for that workshop and learn everything about my EDP platform. Train part, like you know, science communication skills, elevator pitch, when you attend these things, you know, you get, we give you two credits and these are more involved, these are core competency uh, aspects. And we wanna make sure that you, know, you have at least one of those if you participate in like bigger mentoring kind of like programs. Experience if you do uh, internships or shadowing, we don't give any credits because this is pretty much on your own. If you're interested, we're not gonna force you to do this. If you wanna do it, do it, but no credits. But you know that that's gonna help you a lot uh, in future. Transition parts also give you two pretty credits. The reason why two, because they are more involved. It takes tons of courage to go up there and talk to people and just like find like you know, some common talking points. And since we'll prepare you for that, you go for those things and that's why you'll get uh, two PD credits. So you pretty much like just within a week, you know, if you did, you did this, you go for my IDP, you can get like four credits, attend one more event, and you can take any of the courses from Division of Continuing Education. Participating in mentoring programs also involves like more than five PD credits. There are some high, um, very popular events. Um, Site PhD we used to do, but then business concept for scientists, STEM scientists, we just started this time. It's a pilot program. We open it to everyone, but moving forward, the, pro uh, the program has become very popular and we will be actually asking for your PD credits to enroll into that. So just stay engaged. Let's see, so this is YouTube channel, Elevator Pitch Workshops. You know, we put all those videos here. You can listen and watch those videos. How do we keep you engaged other than just coming for events and doing all that? Other way of, you know, when I talked about YouTube channel, you know, um, again, I was in, I've been living in big cities, Philadelphia, Chicago never needed a car, public transport was great, and I would listen to things online on podcast stuff. But here people drive a lot and people think, well, you know, if I miss an event, I'm driving for one hour to come to work. I'm busy in lab. I don't have time for this thing. I'm going through my PhD training, postdoc training. This is why we're trying to build these YouTube channels where you can listen to those things, tap into that resource anytime. And even if you miss an event, you can um, follow what happened in the event. We do newsletter, you miss an event, we do recap of every event, and there we tell you what was the major points discussed and the resources which they discuss. This newsletter is also, it's a weekly newsletter where we put, there's a lot of stuff going on on campus. There's a lot of stuff going on in local area, and you need to be aware about that. You don't have to go to spend one hour on LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, getting emails, tons of emails from all over, and you get lost. I mean, I know what I was like, I'm like, what do I go for? Like, can I get one resource where everything is and I can pick and choose? So this is, we're trying to build this as one-stop shop where you'll get all the information in one place. And along with that, we'll have a lot of career development articles, you know, a lot of job opportunities, a lot of alumni keep posting jobs. And we will write in parentheses that if you're interested in this job, write to me or one of us so that we can connect you to that recruiter or mentor who can help you to get your foot into the door. So follow this, you know, after you leave this room, we'll put all your emails into the newsletter listserv. If you don't like it, there is an unsubscribe button at the bottom. You can get out of it. Um, okay, these are our alumni testimonials. We have a long list of alumni who've gone through the program. They have in many different kinds of jobs and they're always happy to come back and talk to you. Um, they're in science policy and they're scientists now and she's a medical writer. So they're always happy to help come back and you know talk to trainees. This is the most important part. I really wanted to show this slide um, because when I talked about the traditional model, and then I talked about the broadening experiences in scientific training, and I took this different model, 
National Academies of Sciences, um, Engineering and uh, Medicine came up with this report last year, how to revitalize the STEM education for 21st century. They gave tons of recommendations in that. You know, it's so good to see that people actually realizing that how important it is to give more diverse training. So that uh, we really fulfill directly like one of the aspects which the main part, career exploration and preparation for PhD students. We have to give an overall intellectual development, comprehensive knowledge of different careers, so we are directly fulfilling that. We are really at the forefront of this National Academies of Sciences. Our programming is advanced, and it's one of the unique ones in Southern California. You're all lucky to be part at UCI and part of this program. I would highly recommend to take um, best, make best use of it. One of the um, more innovative aspects we are talking right now is GPS STEM radio. This is again one of those things. If you are, if you don't attend, you cannot attend an event. Put your headphones on. Headphones on. Work in the lab and then listen to all the you know great speakers who are, we are not going to be able to bring now because of the compressed budget. But since we know them very well, we'll connect with them online and they'll actually you can listen to them with advice, career advice they are giving. They're going to be different kinds of podcasts, science policy one, career and professional development, science writing. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, science Cafe is our new initiative, which is going to be launching tomorrow. We are, this is one place where you're going to polish your writing skills. You're going to be working with your PI. I know there'll be time. They're not happy with your writing. You're going to feel discouraged, disappointed. But this will be one place if you want to practice your writing skills. We will help you to edit articles and everything. You can put that on your resume when you're applying for any kind of position that you do have some writing experience. So this blog is going to start very soon. We call it Science Cafe um, Interns. So we have two interns working with us, Joanne and Sharon. Joanne uh, does the multimedia. She's the one who's recording this thing right here. Sharon does the newsletter. We'll be recruiting more um, interns in future, but we have something called this trainee council of think tank. And that's the one where if you have PhD students and postdoc participate in our programming. Our program is unique in a way that I have PhD postdoctoral training, David is a faculty. We try to do best what we think you guys need. But at the same time, we have to involve you guys also and give us feedback about what we should be doing more. So this trainee council think tank is composed of PhD students and postdocs. This is where you will participate. You'll give us recommendations, you know, how, what we should be changing if we have left some voids, which you can help us fill. Out of that training council, we will be picking up some interns. You can work with us. All the experiences, high demand skills, which I mentioned, we provide opportunities to do internship with us for three months. So just stay tuned for that also. Are there any questions? I just finished. Oh, thank you. That was great. Yeah, with, that, with the wrong slides. <laughs> no, it was great. <laughs> thank you. Hello, everyone. Like Corinna said, my name is Lauren Lyon. I am the graduate career counselor over at Division of Career Pathways. I know you've taken in a lot of information already, so I'm just going to be really quick. Basically, I just want you to know that I exist, and I'm here to help you um, anything career related, which is why GPS STEM and my office work so well together. Um, but essentially, this is our goal, right? So we want you to just gain knowledge of what's out there, your different options, whether in academic or non-academic paths. Um, and be able to identify um, skills, training opportunities, things that you can do to enter those meaningful careers. So like Arunda was saying, we're going to take a, an approach that's going to encompass kind of everything, that holistic approach. So self-assessment, what really are those interests, um, those skills that you want to use, those work values, do you want to make an impact, what type of impact in that work that you do, how can we explore, how can we make the decision to narrow it down, and then to that point to actually apply. So following that same path that are those pillars of GPS STEM, which is why we work so well together. So what does that mean to you? Essentially, I want you just to learn how to verbalize those. So in everything that you're doing when we're ready to transition, you're taking these courses. If you want to meet one-on-one -on -one with someone, have, have an appointment with me. Come to drop-ins. Let's practice what you've been learning through GPS STEM and throughout your work. Um, if you need to fill in gaps in funding, you need to find those summer internships. Let me know. We can work through that together. Um, develop a CV or a resume, LinkedIn profile. We do all that stuff here. We work together. But if you want that more one-on-one, -on -one individualized appointments, that's through me. Okay. Um, and who has heard of Handshake? Before I forget. Good. I'm so glad. <laughs> so Handshake is the way that you'd get connected with our office, Division of Career Pathways. right? And that's how you would make the one-on-one -on -one appointments. You'd find out about events, workshops that are going on through our office as well. 
Um, so make sure that you're connected. Everyone has an account. You just need to go in and activate it. Um, and last thing is practicing for interview strategies. So I know it's not realistic to always come in and have one-on-one -on -one appointments. They're typically about 45 minutes. Do them when you can and when it makes sense for you. But there's a lot of different ways that you can take advantage. So for instance, career fairs. This Thursday, we have our STEM career fair. Is anyone planning to attend? Few, maybe, OK. So if you're just interested in any kind of summer internships, in particular full-time jobs outside um, of the academic realm, then it would be a great place to um, start, to look at the employers that are coming. I think there's over 150 employers that are coming, and it's solely STEM related. So make sure you check it out. Everything is on Handshake if you want to look. But that's on this Thursday. Also, employer info sessions. Um, and then one that's useful for you is just different technology that you can use to kind of supplement the appointments, the different events that go on through GPS STEM. So we talked about a handshake. VMock is an AI machine that will review your resume for you instantly. So you probably all have CVs, but how do we convert that CV to a resume if we are looking more at those non-academic jobs? This is a great place to start. Big interview, helps with interview skills, teach you how to interview, and also practice interviewing. <coughs> Excuse me. Versatile PhD and Imagine PhDs are just tools online as a resource for you to be able to see what other careers are there besides, non -ac besides academic careers. Okay, so just for you to, to bookmark and explore at some point or come and see me and we can work through the different areas together. The basics, so we're located on Ring Road. Uh, do you know where the Student Center Starbucks is? So we're directly across from there. So if you ever do want to come to our events, see me, just stop in, pop in, and we can say hi. Services are free for students, so make sure you use it while you are a current student. Um, and we're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Throw in, I already said the STEM fair. It's 10 to 3, October 17. Also going to plug in, if you are looking, uh, for an academic job and you just want to learn, there is a preparing for the academic interview panel next week as well. Um, that's it for my slides. I wanted to just throw it at you and be real quick.